One of the things I've been informed is that whilst people enjoy watching these videos, I have been glossing over the whole levelling up process and what skills and abilities Scarlet has. I admit I was doing that because I didn't think that to be of great interest to people. It seemed I was wrong. So this video is an attempt to rectify all that. So first thing here is we have our character sheet. As you can see, I've been spending most of my points in strength and mental power, which affect how much damage I do and how much damage my spells do. Constitution on my hit does my hit points and mental energy is controlled by my wisdom attribute. At the moment I don't have any more points to spend but generally next level it will be the same line, probably one point in constitution a couple of and then one each in strength and mental power or maybe two in strength. Next we come to our physical skills. Um, as you can see I've unlocked all four of the weapon trees so I don't have any advanced skills in spear and hammer. The Moonblade tree is ha has a bunch of semi-mystic skills, so these are still physical abilities using the blade rather than spells. So we've got Twilight Rift here, which slows people down. This is supposed to be a sort of damage over time effect, but I haven't really seen it do much on enemies. I think I'm just not very good at noticing it doing it. This is the Moonblade block. Unfortunately, unlike the sword block or the spear block, there's no... Uh, follow up riposte action so it's just a purely defensive get out of the way sort of manoeuvre and finally this is an AOE attack I've used it once or twice generally when uh, generally when being mobbed by lectors now in the sword mastery tree again we've got the passive skill which uh, just gives you another chain and does a bit more damage and so on now we've got the basic block which you don't really need to use as once you get the riposte this repost attack actually confused me for a while because I didn't really understand how you do it. But what you do is you put it onto your second mouse button and then when you're attacked, as they hit you, you click the left mouse button to repost. So you use you put it on your self map on your right mouse button, go into a block stance, and then uh, strike back when they hit you. This is quite handy, it's a knockback attack. Knockback is really quite useful because it gives you quite a few seconds to follow up with more attacks against your enemy. And finally, this is another knockback, but that is AoE. I haven't done much in the spear mastery tree, I've just got the block and obviously the mastery itself. Spear has both a, an, a riposte of its own and uh, a slam and it's a multi-attack thing, but it seems to only be one pa one one target. Unlike the sword, the spear can actually block all attacks, whereas the sword can only block other blades. It's the hammer. Of, uh, the hammer does knock down. It does have a block, but again, like like the moonblade block, it doesn't have any follow-up post skill, so minimal use. Use, however, it will block swords, hammers, and axes. Its final ability, which I don't have, is an AoE knockdown, probably quite useful. The main problem with the hammer, I find, is the slowness makes it quite hard to chain skills. Finally, we've got a bunch of uh, independent skills here. We've got this is a sort of passive one that when you sneak up on people, does more damage. This is. Um, yes, well. You can imagine the animation for here, really. Scarlet basically knees them in the bollocks. Uh, it seems to be quite effective. This is a passive skill. It just lets me get loot from animals. And I don't have alchemy. I suspect I had to have joined the Hooded Wings to get that, as they do sell alchemy potions. Finally, we're going to turn on to the necromancy skills. Okay, here's our first, our first tree is the, this one with the ravens and uh, this is the basic one lets you see the twilight world this one is the one that lets you summon ravens to kill your enemies this is supposed to guide you to the quest but I never really got the hang of using it I think I got it to work once or twice in the tutorial area but when it does work what it does is it summons a raven who, which immediately starts fl flapping off in the direction of your selected quest finally this one lets you do lets you borrow lets you see what a nearby raven is seeing, so you don't control which raven you see from, it's always the same raven showing you the same thing. 
This uh, this one lets you see the ghosts, and this is supposed to make them stand still, but I haven't really used it much. I find it generally more effect. I've I haven't really used it much. I find that the weapon skills give me better ways of knocking people down and taking them out of the fight for a few seconds. And most of the enemies that you really like to slow down, like bosses, tend to not be vulnerable to it. These two are life drains. One's supposed to be single target, the other, um, the other AOE. Have I have noticed this one work against multi multiple targets when they're closely grouped? So I get, but I guess it maybe does less to them. I haven't got this skill tree. I think I missed a, I missed a gateway statue. Because yeah, you learn the opening skill in necromancy in the necromancy trees from gateway statues which is these winged angel statues that take you into the spirit world where you speak to Rory not Rory Benedict so I got into a habit of calling him Rory in the intro because he looks he sort of reminded me of Rory from the current Doctor Who series but he's actually called Benedict so yeah this 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 is quite good deadly this sounds like it's gonna be quite fun for sort of splitting up groups of enemies um this is obviously a long range AoE which I've been lacking so far and uh, don't really see that this can be too useful Scream of Death but certainly these two look quite good and I need this one for plot reasons because I've got to go and speak to some dead people. This next chain uh, starts with being able to get treasure from the dead. Now the problem with it is that these two, these two skills aren't really much used. I haven't had a point yet where I've wanted to, you know, I've needed more time in the Twilight world, which is quite annoying because the next ones are quite useful in terms of attack strength and so on. This is this one especially is nice because it lets you block spells. So I haven't really come across spell using enemies. I'm sure that'll change soon. Um, yeah, this is curse barriers. Don't know much. Haven't come across this yet. Yet, but I'm guessing there's going to be a curse barrier later on in the game, and I'm going to need this skill to uh, to get past it. So effectively, this is a gating skill for a later section of the game, as is this. Um, that's quite good. This is one you use when you're dead. It does damage to enemies, so you have to sort of use it instantly before they wander off back to their starting point. Uh, this looks like I don't know if this you use this on enemies you've just killed or on the skeletons you see wandering lying around. Probably on the skeletons, otherwise it's a bit too easy to find uh, fodder for it. Oh, that's part of that tree. Now these look quite interesting. I'm guessing this is sort of like the big end of game master skill use on the undead archon himself. Thing. But anyway, that's my skills. In my weaponry, I've, I've basically just got better hammers, swords, and so on. So I hope that uh, satisfies some people who are wondering what skills and abilities I have. The main reason I do cut this out is because I do tend to spend quite a bit of time deliberating over it. It doesn't, it didn't strike me as being very interesting to you. So sorry about that. 